Welcome CSE 121, Programming 1, Fall 2020, to Exercise 10. This is going to be our dice game, and we're going to incorporate the random module. We're going to generate some random numbers, and we're just going to play dice. We're going to roll two die, and the computer's going to roll two die, and then we'll see who wins, and then eventually we'll do a two out of three. And here's the finished version to kind of see what's going to happen here. Now, we're not doing it where we actually have a button where we say, like, roll dice. We can incorporate more into it, but right now, all we have is the computer's just running it through a loop. And you can see what's happening here. I'll just go through it. It says you rolled six and one for a seven total. And this says computer rolled two and six or eight total. I guess I should could say four a seven total. And it says computer wins because they had eight and I had seven. So they won. It's just if you're rolling dice against each other. So here's a score. We're keeping track of score here. So it's zero one. I have zero. Computer has one. And then the second time I rolled a one and a four for a five. And the computer rolled two and a four for six, so the computer won again. So they won two nothing, and they were up to nothing, and actually that should have been over. Computer wins two out of three. If computer wins, computer wins, it should be over. So I'll have to check my code on why that didn't end there. That should have ended. But then there was one more here where I got one. It says computer wins two of three, so I'm not sure why it went one more time here. We'll have to check our code. But the idea is we're just rolling dice against each other. And then somebody's going to win based on the higher number using conditional statements. And then after whoever wins, we could kind of tally up points to whoever gets a win gets a point. So computer gets a point. Computer gets a point. Should have been over here. So we'll have to check our code. Uh, let me run it one more time just to make sure that wasn't some glitch. It's one nothing, one one, two one, and it's going to two one. It shouldn't be going to two one. It should be whoever wins two, it should be over. So I'm not sure why it's doing that. You know what we're getting to. The first part we're going to do is really going to be just saying who wins. And it'll just be this part here. And then we'll worry about keeping track of score and who wins. But we'll just get the first part working so that we're just adding them up and outputting who wins. So that's what we're going to do. And we're going to start that from scratch. So I'm going to go in my different account, my student account, and work on it there just like I'm a student. Okay, so I'm logged into the account that I just created on the previous video. And there I am up there. And I think I already created a repel. So let me check it out here. There's my CSC 121 folder. If you didn't do that, you can make a folder here and just click inside here. And I think if you start making files without a name, I think it'll make like an unnamed folder or unnamed file folder or something, which I don't have right now. So this is the file I was working on and I didn't do anything yet. And there's no real code here yet. So I can kind of set it up the way I want. I'm just going to go in my settings and make it a little bit bigger. I'll just make it large so it's easier to see. And then I'll close this up over here. So I don't need my files open. I'll give myself lots of room to code. So what we're going to do is roll dice against each other. So we're going to generate random numbers. And remember what you need first if we're using random numbers? We need to import the random module. So we have to do import random. And it's giving me a green wavy line. And that's kind of like a grammar issue. It's saying it's imported but unused because we're not using it yet. So it's just telling us that. The red wavy line is the one where we have syntax errors. So what we're going to do is generate random numbers. And I'm going to generate four random numbers. I'm going to do two for my two die and two for the computer's die. So what I'll do is I think on the last time I did something like a variable called like you are, like you roll, and then one. And then that's going to be a random number. So we'll just use the random. Remember the random module dot rand int. That's the one that generates integers. And then we give a range, and it's inclusive of both numbers. So I could do 1, 6. And then once you do that, just copy this. And I'm going to call this ur for you roll 2. And same thing. So it's just going to generate two of them. And then obviously we're going to print them out. And while I'm doing this, I'll just copy this whole thing. And I'll do the one for the computer. And I'll just put a space here. And I'll call it computer rolls, CR for computer rolls. And if you want to put something here, you know, you could put like you roll, and here you could put computer rolls, just so you know. So we're generating these four random numbers. And the way we had it on our sample, it said you rolled a blank and a blank, which totals however you want to say that. So let's just do one. So let's, we're going to print here. I guess we can use an F string. So we'll do F, and we'll just put two quotes. And actually, that gave me a little problem here. The nice thing here, I'll just show you this. Let's say we're going to do an F string. And then we were going to say URL1 and URL2. And I have to put these in curly braces. And I'm messing up all my, my stuff here. And then I just do shift quote. It'll wrap the quotes around it. 
and I'm getting a message here because undefined you are I put an L in here be careful with that with that you are I'm thinking URL actually let me do that then I won't be thinking I'm somehow my brain's thinking URL or something so I'll put you roll computer rolls so I'll put you rolls so I'll make sure they're all lined up but it's nice it kind of matched up it told me that I didn't have the right match up there so so there, there's the U roll and computer roll, and I have U roll there, so that makes sense. So this is going to tell me what I rolled, and I could finish it off and say, which is something total. I don't know what it is yet because I didn't, I don't have a variable yet for that. And I'll stretch this out here so I have a little more room. And I don't know what variable I'm going to use for that, but it's probably going to be something like y r tote. Remember we were using tote before, so we'll use y r tote. And I'm getting an error there because I don't have it yet. I'm getting kind of a syntax thing warning me that there's no YR tote. And what we're going to do is just add them together. So I could do that here. I could just say YR tote equals, and it's just going to add these together. It's just going to add YR1 plus YR2. It's just going to add them together. And then I could just copy this and do the same thing for computer and just change it to C and then CR1. And they have an auto format here. Let's see what this does. Look at that, it puts spaces in here. Even though I say you don't have to use the spaces, it makes it look a little nicer, the spaces. So if you don't type it with spaces around the equal sign, it makes it look all nice. And that'll help you out a little bit here. I think this might be new. I don't remember seeing that before. And one of the things I was mentioning, like if you were like, oh, I want to move this over here, and you just want to do like a shift return or something like that, it messes up the code. You got to be careful with that. That's why you want to use, I'm going to undo that. That's why you want to use this for the soft wrap. So it wraps kind of naturally, and it's not putting any kind of break in the code that isn't really there, that isn't really part of the code. All right, so we have this total here, and I'm just going to copy this, and I'll put one for the computer, and we'll basically have two print statements, and it'll say computer rolled, rolled a CR1. See, it's more exciting like that. <laughs> you, you could picture the die, you could picture the dice rolling, and it's a six, even though it's just it's just going to run it. It's not. We're not going to really see anything. It'd be nice if we had something graphic to work on here, but but we don't right now. But we're just trying to incorporate some of the things we've been working on, such as random numbers, such as while loops and conditional statements. Now we haven't done that yet. So far, we're just throwing out some numbers here. That's all we're doing here. But we're going to build this up a little bit with while loop and conditional statements. And notice you don't have to save, so you don't have to incrementally save. It'll auto save for you, just like Google Docs or something like that. So you don't have to worry about doing that, but we might want to run at this point, just see what we have. You rolled a five and one, which is six total. And computer rolled a one and a five, which is six total. So wow, we tied. So what's gonna happen here? Well, there's gonna be basically, we have to put who won here. That's all we're gonna do on this part. We're gonna put who won. Now we have to put who won. Now this is a tie. So there's three scenarios. I win, computer wins, or we tie. So there's three scenarios. So if you think about an if else statement, there's gonna be if, elif, else, because there's only three conditions that are gonna happen. Either I win, the computer wins, or we tie. So we're gonna to have to do that. And it doesn't matter where we do that, but we are gonna put out a different statement that actually says who wins. So after here, I'm gonna do something called print and I'm just going to put a variable in here called message. That'll be the message. I'm going to get a red wavy line because I don't have the variable defined yet. But we're going to define that variable in an if else statement, in a conditional block. And we could put this up here. We don't want to put it after. We want to put it before we print anything out because we want to put it before this message. But I'm going to put an extra space here and we're just going to make a conditional block. Now we're not doing any loops or anything like that. We're just going to say if, now how do we know if we won? Well, we know if the R total is greater than their total, then we win. If Y R tote is greater than C R tote, then then and if you hit return, it should indent, then we win. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say message equal. Instead of just printing here, we already have a print message. We're gonna print one message, but we're gonna change what the message is here. So I'm gonna put message equals and assign this and say you win. I'll put it in all caps so it's really exciting. So I'll put it like that. So you win. The alternative is you lose. So I'm going to backspace here. And actually, one thing just to point out here. If I hit return and I want to go back here, instead of hitting the back button a couple times, what you could do is shift tab. Shift tab will take you back here again. So that's a little, little tip for you there. Shift tab will move you back. So it'll kind of unindent for you. 
And now I'm going to put in my else because that's the other option. So basically, if I don't win, then the computer wins. And then the message for the computer is basically going to be computer wins. And I won't put that in caps. I'll just put it like that. Computer wins. I don't want to be all happy about that. So computer wins. That's what happens. And remember, there's a third scenario. And we'll do that as the elif because here, this is a condition. And this is the condition if it's not that. The only other condition we're going to have, and again, remember shift tab, we're going to do an elif. And that's going to be the one, boy, I'm typing really bad. I guess I'm not used to this, <laughs> used to replit. I'm used to Python anywhere. It's taking me a while. But remember here with elif, we have to put a condition. Else doesn't have a condition. It just has the result. So we have to put a condition. And our condition is if they're the same. So we just have to put, and I could copy this if I don't feel like typing it, and make sure I put a colon in here. Uh, if these are equal, but they have to be equivalent. So we have to put equals equals. So make sure you put in the equals equals. And we have an else there. Now, you might be, well, what's wrong with else? I spelled it right. Keep in mind that sometimes when you see an error, it has to do with the line ahead of it. And the line ahead of it needs something after here. So we have to make sure we hit return here. And then we have something happening here in the elif section or in this kind of conditional section here. So what's going to happen is we're going to do message assigned to, and we're just going to say it's a tie. And that's it. So these are the three conditions. You win or computer wins. You could say you lose or something, but and then it's a tie, basically, if that happens. So these messages will print out after it's all over, and they're based on these totals. So let's see what happens here. And again, we don't have to save. So let's run it. And it says, you rolled a 5 and 3, which is 8 total. And computer rolled a 5 and 4, which is 9 total. Computer wins. Let's try it again. Uh, I rolled a 3 and a 2. They rolled a 3 and a 3. Let's see if I can win. Uh, they still won. Uh, finally, I won. I got a 6 and a 4, which is a 10. And they rolled a, a 6. So I won that one pretty good. Let's see if I can win two in a row. And there I got a 7 and 4. So now I'm, now I'm on a winning streak now. So that's all we need to do for the first part of this. So this is the first part. If you get this, maybe we'll call the second version B or something if you just want to get this done and make sure this works. Uh, but Because what we're going to do next, we're going to add more code to it. So I think what we will do is when we make our next version in the next video, we'll fork this. I'll show you how to fork it and we'll make like a copy of it so we have a second version of it so that you could leave this one working as it is since we are going to make some modifications to the other one. That way, even though you're all, you are building on it, it might be nice to just to show you the different evolutions of it from the very simple dice roll that we're having here and then actually putting in a while loop and keeping score and things like that. Especially if you start having problems, then you could just work on that file and you know this file is okay. So, so this is the first part of this. You don't have to necessarily share this, but when you do share it, you're going to go to share and you're going to skip this. I just want to mention, you're, don't do this. Skip this and you're just going to copy the, the repel link here. This is the one you're going to copy. That's the one you're going to put into the add comment section. I'll show you how to do that in the next video. But this is the one here, not this. And it's also the same thing up here. So if you just wanted to copy this, you could copy that when it's time to share it. But we're not going to share it yet. We'll wait until we do the second one. So we'll come back with part two of our 10 dice game.